It was a heck of a year for Colin Morikawa, that is 2020 through 2021. Morikawa, the defending champ at the Open, and it was remarkable, only that was his last win. Since then, 19 winless starts for the 25-year-old. That is the longest drought of his PGA Tour career. Taking a look at the last 10 Open winners and their pre-tournament odds, I do want to mention every single name you see here is in the field this week. The last golfer to defend his title at the Open, that was Patrick Harrington back in 2008. Let's welcome the host of the First Cut podcast, Rick Gaiman, here. We are very excited about this week. Uh, we do see the return of Tiger Woods. He has talked about how so much of his year has been focused on this week. He has a longer shot, 65 to 1 odds to win. I, I don't think you're going to say yes, but I'm not sure. Does he have a chance to win? Probably not, Amanda. There are just so many golfers in this field who are playing at their best right now. The game's never been deeper, but I think our expectations for Tiger do have to be greater than what we saw in the first uh, two major championships. He made the cut at both the Masters and the PGA Championship. Of course, he, he withdrew going into the final round. Uh, at, at the PGA, but this is a golf course that is that is perfectly set up for it. You know, the old course at St. Andrews is is very flat. It allows you to tap into your creativity. And what we're seeing from Tiger Woods already early in the week, it provides a lot of optimism. He's played over 50 practice holes already uh, this week, and we are still, you know, many hours away from this thing actually kicking off uh, on Thursday on Thursday morning here in the States, which tells me that uh, this is not going to be a grueling walk for him it tells me that he's leaving everything out there on the golf course knowing that he has plenty of opportunity to rest and recuperate moving forward so I, I do expect quite a bit from tiger but winning seems like a like a sizable ask look we just want a good week right let's just get to the weekend and we're going to call that a win from what we've seen in the past couple of majors there so we saw the graphic coming in the past 10 winners all of them in the field there are actually 17 former Open Championship winners in the field this week. Who comes away as, as the top contestant out of those former winners, if you will? Yeah, absolutely. So you got to kind of look at uh, the odds and the form coming in, of course. And the one that has my attention is, is Louis Ustase in there at, at 40 to 1. And it's kind of hard to reconcile the golf that is being played by the guys on uh, the Live Golf Tour right now. Louis got two top 10s in both of those um, tours events. Are, are those good? Are those bad? It's only, you know, 48 golfers for 54 holes. I think that it's something to be considered. But you look at his record around St. Andrews and it's, it's literally spotless. He wins this thing in 2010 he loses in a playoff in 2015 so the last two trips to the old course no one has beaten Louis Ustase in, in regulation uh, I, I think he's due for another good week here and and I like like those odds at 40 to 1. Rick your expertise we're going to get some picks for you here uh, and one that we don't do often and I love that we're doing this margin of victory where do you go? Yeah, so I'm going with one shot, which is generally the most likely outcome. I would love to say it's going to be a runaway victory like Louis Eustazen had here in 2010, but usually that requires a significant wave advantage or disadvantage thanks to the weather. You know, knock on wood, this can change any seconds, but as of right now, that Thursday, Friday weather looks fair to everyone, uh, which means this is going to be fairly close in terms of scoring averages throughout the day. And then you look at the depth of the field and how good everyone is playing right now. I don't think anyone runs away with this, so I'm going to take one shot to be the margin of victory. For this I don't week. want to run away winner. I want to be sick to my stomach on like the back nine on Sunday. That's how I feel good. That's how you know it's going to be absolutely great. Uh, give me a top 20 pick. Yeah, so I'm looking a little bit further down the board here, and I and I find someone uh, named Corey Connors, and, and I love what Corey Connors has been doing this year. He is one of the best players that we have on the PGA Tour from tee to green, and the putter has just been okay. But if you're Corey Connors, that's all it has to be because the rest of his game is so strong. And while he probably doesn't win as much as I would like or as much as he would like, we're not asking for Corey Connors to win. We're asking him to finish on the first two pages of the leaderboard. That's something he does on a routine basis around the world. I think he gets it done again this week at, at the old course. Let's go from top 20 to top 10. Who's the pick to finish in top 10? I'm absolutely enamored with Max Homa. Everything that he has been doing over the course of the last few weeks, months, and years, it's all positive. He has gotten 
um, consistently better every year that he's been on the PGA Tour, and now he's very much at his peak. He is one of the best ball strikers that we have over the last 50 rounds, and he has plugged a major leak in his game. That's his around the green play. Starting in 2022, he lost strokes around the green in seven of his first 10 events. He's now gained strokes around the green in four straight. He's going to get to play with uh, his self-described uh, hero for the first two days in Tiger Woods. I think there's going to be a lot of juice out there for Max Homa, and I think he can finish inside the top 10. And he's funny. Like, I think that wasn't it Max Homa who, like, tweeted out when he was, like, chasing after a paper or something. He's like, oh, I'm glad that looked as embarrassing as it felt there. Um, Max Homa, a fun guy to watch this week. All right, your pick to win the 150th Open Championship. It's Jordan Spieth, and I think that we've had four really good major venues for, for Jordan this year, and unfortunately he hasn't take advan taken advantage of, of the first three. But what we saw from him last week at the Scottish Open is a perfect appetizer into what we're going to get from him at the old course at St. Andrews. He is incredibly creative. On this firm, fast, link style golf course, there is a lot of things that you are not going to be able to control. Uh, these guys are not going to be able to control their ball once it hits the ground, and someone like Jordan Spieth, who really thinks through every shot, who is almost neurotic about the outcome of every swing that he puts on a golf ball. That's that's a talent. That's a skill for this week. So I believe that Jordan Spieth um, is going to continue to pad his his Open Championship resume, and I think he's going to add another claret jug to it. Rick, I am 38 minutes into your last podcast. I swear I'm in the makeup room listening to this because I'm going to play. Yeah, there you go. You see, it's right there. First cup pod. Uh, DFS goodbyes in bad buys here. You can start with whichever one you want. I am playing this week, so please help me out here. Let's start with bad buys so that we can look forward to something here. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau worries me. You know, for all of the talk about creativity and being able to have a bunch of different shots around the green and being able to take into account wind and all these just unnatural things, that feels like, you know, putting a saint of, uh, of, 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 Grand, a grain of sand into the motherboard of Bryson DeChambeau. I don't think that works out very well, and his Open Championship record uh, kind of describes that. And the same thing for Hideki Matsuyama. Not a very good Open Championship resume. Uh, I worry about his ability to uh, to, to two putt. This, these, some of these greens are absolutely massive. There's seven double greens out there, and I just think that the putter is going to be a, a weak spot for him. So those are two guys that I'm worried about. On the flip side, uh, there's a couple of good buys I'm very excited about. One being Will Zalatoris, who uh, has not only told us that he is a, a major championship player, but he's backing it up. Six top tens and eight major championship starts. He had to withdraw from the Open Championship with an injury uh, in the second round uh, last year, but he was gaining strokes to the field uh, in the holes that he did play. And then Seamus Power is one of the few guys that has actually made the cut at all three major championships. He's piling up great results. He he can get hot with the putter and his price tag on these fantasy sites allows you a lot of flexibility to go out and make a, a lot of different lineups um, and, and put really anybody else that you would like in those lineups with Seamus Power. So those are two guys I'm really excited about getting access to. Rick Gaiman, host of the First Cut Podcast. We'll talk to you as the week rolls along, getting ready for the Open Championship. Want to recap some of his picks here, taking a look at them. Top former winner, he likes the odds when it comes to Louis Oosthuizen. Margin of victory, he's going with just one shot. Top 20 finish, Corey Connors. Top 10 finish, Max Homa. And his pick to win, Jordan Spieth. And if you would like more winning picks from our friends at Sportsline, you can join right now for just a single dollar. Look to the left, go to sportsline.com forward slash join. Over on the right, you see the promo code to join for just a buck. It is trophy. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.